Okay, we are in Carson, Washington, a little slice of paradise here at the home of Gary and Eileen White, and it is gorgeous here. Thank you, it is. I agree. We have that, a great day. That drive along the Columbia River to get here and the forest and the whole thing, ooh, boy, I'm jealous. Yes, and we have a lot of people come and say that they found the prettiest place on in the world. And it's a great spot for horses and, and cockers. <laughs> <laughs> now, you too. started with horses, right? That was how you kind of got into the whole animal thing. Yes, I started with horses, although I had a cocker as a child. My dad got his um, first hunting dog was a cocker. Uh, he took him out hunting one time, shot the gun, the dog ran home, and he became my horse riding buddy ever since. Yeah. <laughs> Good old Sarge. And then I got into horses living up because I grew up here. And you have a, a degree uh, in equine management or something like that? I have a bachelor's degree in equine science and it, it's kind of like a veterinary degree but just horses and um, I actually have two majors one is teaching and one is breeding genetics and I was the very first person in the state of South Carolina to receive a bachelor's degree in that field so I got interviewed by the news it was a big <laughs> deal when I graduated but it's been very helpful with the dogs. To yeah, the breed. whole genetics background would really come in handy then when you, because cocker genetics are not that complicated. No, once <laughs> once I figured out how to equal the horse part and the, and the dog part, and the reason why I actually picked cockers, one, I like the hair like my little pony, but number two, they're sporting dogs with the same type of standard that um, my sporting, my jumping dressage horses had. If you read the two standards, they're almost the same on movement and everything. Yeah. Now, Gary, you had cockers before you and Eileen met. That's right, which was amazing. Uh, <laughs> it was. I had it uh, back in 1985. I had a cocker um, for a few years. Um, and ever since then, that's one of the reasons why we met. Uh, we met at Petco, uh, where I'm a general manager. And uh, that was one of the things that Eileen um, loved about me was that I actually had a Cocker Spaniel. And um, so that was a big plus for me. <laughs> and, you, and you were like a grooming trainer or something at Petco, right? I was the grooming manager at the store where they hired him to bring in. I'd been there for like five or six years. Yeah. yeah. And also a trainer um, for the district. So all the groomers that uh, came into Petco, she kind of uh, helped I train them. Taught grooming. Yeah, so you're no slouch in the grooming department. That's why we're paying you the big bucks to be here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then in the cocker world, I mean, wow, you've had like 20, 25 champions, something like that, right? Yes, yeah, something, I haven't really sat down, but about 25 champions, owner handled, breeder owner handled mostly, a few mm -hmm. that we've purchased, but mostly breeder owner. Yes, you know there was one Zim champion cocker. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but, but here's the thing. Here, you know, I, she beat us in the ring. <laughs> yes, she did. I remember that. <laughs> but this is what I learned. Part one of the things I learned in my little brief stint in the show world is that if I take my little show dog, trying to you know get her to become a champion, I take her to a show that you guys are going to be at. My chances have really <laughs> diminished here quite a bit. <laughs> Yes, yeah. that that is true. That is true. Yeah, they don't Cockers, like to play with us. As no, much. they don't play with us that much. <laughs> Cocker showing is very hard for. Um, we get a lot of all breed handlers that try to come into the cocker ring, and it's hard for them too. They're shown a little different, and the grooming is is really intense to, to groom them in the correct manner for the ring. That accentuates the good parts, hides the bad parts, and it, it's a it's quite a skill. And that leads into exactly where we're going next. We're going to take, like, the epitome of cockers and, and take a look at this dog and, and see what it is you've done to groom it perfectly for the show ring. And then that'll be our inspiration for grooming a pet cocker. Yes, that's what we're going to do. We're going to introduce you to Lance, pin oak stuck on you and show you what we've done to make him look as beautiful as he can so the judges look at him and go, oh, that's the one I want to give the points to. There you go. All right, let's meet him. All right. career. Lance is just beginning his show career. We uh, purchased and finished his brother Dallas, who you'll meet next in the Grooming the Pet competition. And Lance we fell in love with and took us about a year to talk the breeders into letting go with him. <laughs> And he is just beginning. He's only been shown a few times. He already has um, his first major. So he needs one more on his quest to the 15 points to be a champion. 
He's Gary's new show dog, which means I don't get to touch him, according to Gary. <laughs> I get to groom him and train him, but I don't get to show him in the ring. He wants to do it himself. He's absolutely gorgeous. I mean, if I close my eyes and pictured the perfect cocker, that's what I'm picturing right there. Yeah, that's exactly right. He is beautiful. He has a very long neck, a beautiful head. Markings are perfect for him. He's very nice. Okay, so let's try and figure out what you've done as far as grooming to Lance. Like, just, you know, the first thing that you notice right off, okay, we've got real long hair down here at the bottom of the ears, and we've got nothing up there at the top. Point out those kind of things. I'm just going to hand you the mic and walk me down them and, and show me what you've done. Okay. The first thing that you want to do when you're grooming a cocker is... The, if you is to read the standard if you're going to groom them for show and they spend about three or four pages on the head the head the expression of the cocker is very very important so you want to frame the head and the first thing you do is you want to shave the top of the ear a third of the way down so when the judge is looking at it it's almost like a picture frame on each side of the dog's face instead of having big fluffy ears up beside him that kind of competes with the chiseling and the prettiness of his head. We also shave inside so we don't, I'm getting bit by a bee, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, we shave inside so we have air that goes in here and they get air flow because cockers can get um, infections in their ears if they have too much hair underneath there. And ideally an old saying in the cocker world is the leather should be the width around of a wedding ring. Skinny. So you do want to um, shave the top so it lays flat against the head. The top of the ear should be no higher than the corner of the dog's eye. C you can be a creative groomer if your dog actually has a little bit higher ear set and you shave a little bit further down. Also what you need to make certain is when you measure the dog you don't want the ear to be all the way down here and some cockers grow really really long ears. So we do trim the ears off and around it so it comes just about a little bit past the shoulder and the neck so we don't have short ears. The whole thing with the show dog is balance, balance, balance. He should be look like he's can do the job that he's been bred to do which is hunt in the field. He's the smallest sporting dog and he should be able to last all day long so he should be built balanced so he can do that. So the next thing is the head. The ideal cocker head has a nice deep stop, which is this part. And the way I was told is you just run your finger and it should stop. <laughs> and there are some cockers that don't do that. It just kind of goes woo on over. But he has a nice deep stop. You take um, scissors and kind of dig that out to show it off. We're enhancing and showing off everything that we want to draw attention to the judge. We shave the muzzle. Now a lot of people are used to being told to shave the muzzle with a 10 and really short. We shave the muzzle according to that particular dog's build of his muzzle. Some dogs we might even use a 15 blade because their muzzle is so thick. Some we use a 7 to leave a little bit more hair again for balance, balance, balance in the head. So we shave the muzzle making sure everything is, is clean and well groomed so the judge can see what he looks like. And then we have the top knot. Ideally from the side of the cocker's head it should be slightly rounded, no tendency towards flatness according to the standard. Lance has a naturally rounded head. There's, you can see me petting him. There's not a lot of um, flatness, but there are some cockers that have to have a little bit of foofing up there to make it look better. We have a slight top knot, just enough to accentuate the softness of the eyes in his head. and show the judge his pretty round skull. We go down into the back. Cockers are shown with a stripped natural back, meaning we don't run a pair of clipper blades down it. We strip it with a stripping knife. If you've never seen one, it kind of looks like a butter knife, but maybe with a little bit bigger edges. But we strip it and we'll show that to you later on, but we strip it to get a lot of the extra undercoat because cockers have two coats. They have the top and the undercoat, even up here. And we want it to lay flat like it is without any kind of sticking up or hairs going, but just lay nice and flat to show the body of the dog. Now, for us, we're lucky because Lance has a really nice 
top line. There's no dips or bumps or anything that we have to hide. And sometimes you have dogs that might have not a great tail set that it kind of has high hips and drops off so you have to leave a little hair there a little extra hair when we're stripping the back and thinning it to make it look like this sometimes they have maybe um, higher shoulders that you have to leave a lot of hair here and kind of do a little back comb just all those little secret tricks to make the dog look as pretty as he can when the judge is going over him okay as you can see We've shaved the neck. Wait, Gary, move his shoulders a little bit. Lance, look towards the camera, man. This is your big shot. <laughs> we've, <laughs> we've shaved the neck, and a lot of the Cocker um, books will tell you to, they just kind of have a picture of shaving right here. And a lot of people that are learning to, to groom Cockers, even in the show ring, will follow that book. I know I did. I had a book, trimming my dog my first few shows. Tell someone, help me. Each shave on the neck, is for the build of the dog. Ideally you want a neck that is really smooth, goes right down into the shoulder, feels a lot like this grooming table. We don't get that very often. We're fortunate we have this with Lance today. So we take the clippers and run past the shoulder, which is right here, down a little bit to give the neck and show it the whole length of it to the judge. So when Gary's showing him and he pulls the ears forward, the judge can really see how beautiful and long this dog's neck is. If you can use your imagination, imagine we just followed the rules of what they said and stopped it right there. Do you see how much it cuts off? So we want to take it all the way down the whole length of the neck. And we do use that with a, a 10 blade. And if you see though, it looks like it hat goes down here and comes up, which is another thing. You make a W. If you looked at the dog in the front, it, it makes a W because we always want to say the dog has a chest and this kind of gives a little chest hair by leaving that instead of cutting it off. If we cut it off like you see, now he has a chest but I'm pushing on it. I'll do it on this side maybe, you can see better. If you cut it way down, then it makes it look like he doesn't have a chest. When I'm grooming cockers, I always remember um, the famous um, Lassie the Lassie story and Lassie came home, Lassie come home. At the very end of the story Lassie comes home and they're afraid that the, the owner is going to take Lassie back because they sold her and the father grooms Lassie because he's an excellent collie groomer, gives her an ear that stands up and makes her coat black and makes her rear stand up and the owner knows it's Lassie but he says um, you're not going to have that cur near my farm. And the, and the guy goes, oh no, we'll groom her up so she looks great. Well, then the next day it was beautiful Lassie. Well, that's kind of what we do. We try to make a dog, even if he has some faults, look as almost perfect as we possibly can by um, corrective scissoring, blending, and knowing where the, to trim the dog depending on each dog's conformation. And that's the biggest thing of show grooming is I can't groom another dog like I groom this one. Every coat is different, every conformation blend of the shoulder and the rear end, it's all different for each dog and a lot of people get in trouble trying to cookie cutter their show grooming. Okay. When we groom the rear end of the dog we want to show the judge the correct rear angles which are here to here so we take we don't we take a lot of hair off and shorten it up and blend it so when the dog is standing still the judge can see the dog through the coat. We are a coated breed but we do need to trim and bevel the dog so the judge can see the conformation of the dog through the coat without having, of course they do feel the dog on the table but on a stack on a distance they have to be able to see the angles of the dog's rear end and his front end. So we do um, thin and strip all the way down on both sides. When we groom the tail, we want to make sure the dog's tail is still thick and natural without being well, skin like a hot dog is what a lot of people say when they see um, a lot of grooming, over grooming of the tail. We do shave the underneath part and a lot of times I will scissor it so when it's held up there aren't any scragglies down here. However, we do leave a lot of hair as you can see on the tail, but we, we strip it, we do clip it with clippers, with a long set of clippers, like a number four, to make it all even. But we want to have a nice thick tail, not a skinny one that, again, balance, balance, balance. We want the tail to match the dog. So we don't want a big, nice, big dog with a skinny little twig tail. 
So the tail is, is, is an important part to groom. All right, now before we jump into grooming a pet cocker, let's talk about some of the basic tools because my theory is that somebody could do a very, very decent job of grooming their cocker with one tool, and that would be a pair of electric clippers. Uh, you know, if they had an extra 150 bucks or so, uh, you know, a grooming table is really going to help, but you could get by with clippers. What do you think? I think you could. Um, I think it might be a little frustrating if your dog doesn't stand still, but <laughs> yeah. I think that a lot of times I use clippers for a lot of stuff that a lot of people would like, oh, you shouldn't use scissors. I'm like, yeah, clippers work just as well. And I noticed you used Andis clippers, which I learned early on in my dog grooming career, you know, that that's the way to go. I like Andis clippers. I started out with Oster because I have a horse and that's what we use, but they have a vent that blows air out and you have to oil them. And the Andis seems to do a little closer job of, of clipping and I like them a lot better for the dog. And they're a little lighter than Oster and they're a little quieter too. Oh yes, definitely. Especially when doing puppies or the scared pet cocker. They're quiet. Yeah. Now you've worked for Petco. You know that there are different types of Andis clippers and there are like the $50 Andis clippers and there's the $150 Andis clippers and that's the ones you want. Yes, you, you really do want the best that you can afford to get. And um, I use two different ones and if you only have one pet that you're doing you can get away with the two speed instead of the big turbos but if you have a lot of dogs or you pet groom like I do you really need to have more than one pair and you do need to own a pair of turbos that get through some cockers have really thick coats and they need to go through them and if you don't have the engine and the power behind you you're not getting through them and you'll see a lot of equipment you know dog grooming equipment on this DVD most of which you don't need. But the one thing you need is that great pair of Andis clippers. Yes, you need to avoid the clippers that you buy at any kind of... Um, yeah. Kmart, Walmart. Yeah, I was trying to say, I didn't yeah. know if I could say that. Do not get the $39 Walmart clippers. Those are really for your arm hair <laughs> and then that's all they can cut they just have no power it's a lot like trying to um, mow a big field with a little lawnmower and you go through and it uh, and it dies and that's what happens when you use too light a clipper on too heavy a coat all right so let's bring the dog out and we will see exactly why this grooming table is is worth you know what you pay for it too it's not absolutely required but it is going to make your job a heck of a lot easier if you can't afford the grooming table because they are kind of spendy buy the arm it doesn't come with it. You can buy it separately. You can get one for like 45 to $50. Put a towel on your table and, and do that. You Find can clip something. the arm to your dining room table is what exactly. you're saying. Exactly. Yeah. If you can't afford a table, you know, your picnic table, any kind of table, yeah. get the arm. Yeah. That will save you um, down the road pulling your hair out. <laughs> All right. Before we start grooming any cockers, I want to just talk about your other claim to fame, the Cocker Classic Magazine. Yes. This is like big stuff in the show world, right? It is the breed magazine for Cocker Spaniels. It goes all over the world, but not only for show, we do performance, um, rally, obedience, and pet therapy articles. So it's for everybody. Anybody that loves a cocker and wants to have pretty full color full glossy pictures of the cocker to enjoy every other month and articles about how to train your dog for rally or agility or anything so someone actually described it to me and I, I hope that you're not offended by this this is cocker porn right there this is like reading the cocker version of a playboy magazine you thumb through here and it's like oh my god that dog is gorgeous and I, I describe it as a chocolate sundae all the enjoyment, the decadence, but none of the calories. <laughs> yeah. That's how I enjoy it. So, All right, let's bring a dog in and, and let's start grooming a pet cocker. None of this show dog stuff. Let's do the average cocker that somebody would have at home and run through you know, the basics of what they have to do. All right, let's get started. 